Hi everyone, welcome to MLB The Show 22 feature premieres. In each feature premiere, we will take a look at what's new and updated in MLB The Show 22. Tune in each Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific for a new episode. Watch on Twitch and YouTube. So far, we covered 2v2 and 3v3 online co-op. MLB The Show coming to Nintendo Switch. We went deep into pitching, hitting, and fielding in the gameplay episode. We debuted clips from the new commentary team and even showed you some of the new hotness in the realm of presentation. And we went over all the updates to March to October and franchise mode coming this year as well. So head over to YouTube if you haven't checked those out, but let's get into this week's episode. Today, we are going to take a look at Road to the Show and Ball Player. We have the Road to the Show narrative team here with us today to talk about some of the fun new changes and additions to Road to the Show. How about first we introduce ourselves? Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good, Ramon. How are you? I am fantastic. Tell the people at home what you do here on the MLB The Show team. I'm primarily a designer on the commentary team, doing a lot of writing there, but I've been part of the Road to the Show team as the podcast host within the narrative really privileged to work with the folks on this team and bring the minor leagues and the road to the majors to life ben gc is back jared you are new give the folks at home what it is you work on here and a little bit about your background yeah uh my name's jared i'm a senior narrative game designer uh, which if you asked me a couple months ago what that meant um i probably struggle to tell you uh my last decade of experience i was with espn um started in the low ranks as a production assistant and made my, made my way up to a feature producer and here we are you're not on the mlb to show team y'all both along with john and everybody else are helping take us into the future so let's talk to, about the future it's great to have you how about we start this feature premiere off with a narrative reveal i know some of you have seen that joe mauer is back as a legend in mlb the show 22 but did you also know that he will be an analyst and roll to the show this year. Roll the clip, Colin. The phrase, well-played Maurer from the advertising campaigns for MLB The Show has gone down in history with the fans of the game as one of the most beloved phrases associated with it. How often do you have people walking up to you and saying that or some variation of it? All the time, uh, which is fabulous. Um, there's a lot of fans of the game, uh, including myself out there. And uh, to be a part of that, uh, that catchphrase, um, is awesome. Um, they would, uh, as my career continued after the game and the commercial aired, um, they would actually play that catchphrase over the loudspeaker when I would make a nice play. So um, I've enjoyed it over the years. And um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to run into fans of the game and to hear that over and over. Well played, Mauer. Yeah, Joe was an absolute treat to work with. He immediately grasped what we were going for. He's got a terrific sense of humor, and he's a terrific analyst, too. I really think he has a long future ahead as a TV broadcaster if he wants it. He has such great insights. And really, I think it added a lot because last year we didn't have a catcher among our participants. And Joe, being the incredible catcher that he was during his playing career, he could really speak to a lot of tactics and skills that nobody else was really equipped to plus how cool is it to kind of have Maurer back who's a cover athlete you know for our game um and have him back like in the fold kind of still contributing is, it was so much fun to work with it's him. all coming full circle so again it's great to have you both here let's dive more into this narrative feature what were the goals for this year's narrative team when it came to road to the show we wanted kind of these narrative videos that will pop up during your journey um, to kind of be as informative and entertaining as possible. And I think that we got like an awesome mix between those two. The overall goal was to kind of give you information that you can use if you're playing baseball in real life or if you're playing MLB The Show. These tips and, and tricks of the trade can help you in both aspects. I think it was really great to be able to revisit this, particularly with Jared doing the bulk of the writing on this year's project. It was a real joy to approach it from a new perspective, being as I had written so much of the first year. It was great to be able to look at it and take it from a new lens, which added so much. We were able to address all levels of baseball as we did this and really take you from soup to nuts as a baseball player on your journey to the show. All right, and do we have another clip to watch? Yes, we do. Uh, Rachel Balkovec, 
who at the time we recorded it was a hitting coach within the Yankees organization. She's now a manager for one of the minor league clubs in the Yankees organization, joined us to talk about the skills involved in hitting. Awesome. Let's check it out. He's gone more than a few games now without drawing a walk. Plate discipline might be something to work on. I've got minor league manager Rachel Balkovec with me. Rachel, how important is it in a player's development to work on plate discipline and drawing walks? It's absolutely vital. I mean, you're always going to see that people point to the example of somebody hit a home run with a pitch at eye level. But realistically, you're going to do better at hitting line drives, hitting the ball hard and in the air with the pitches down the middle. So you just have a better chance of success, and it's extremely important in player development. Yeah, and you know, Vlad Guerrero, the Hall of Fame outfielder, had the ability to hit pitches on the bounce, pitches that were a foot out of the zone. Most young players do not have that ability. So if you're on your way up, don't put yourself at a disadvantage by chasing a pitch that's in the opposite batter's box. Everyone, including our players, points to Vlad as as the example of why they should be able to do that. But as you said, not everyone has that ability, and even players at the extremely high levels do better when they're swinging at strikes. This feels outstanding. What was it like recording with all these various personalities this year? It was terrific. Rachel and Joe, whom you've seen already, were terrific. We brought back some old familiar faces. Robert Flores was with us. JP Morosi, who was as gung-ho as anybody I've ever seen. He brings such energy and enthusiasm to recording with us. We had a great time working with him as well. But there are so many people coming from so many different angles that we are able to cover a lot of what can happen over the course of your career. And each person brought their own special flavor to it and really put their own spin on it. It was really great to see that and see everybody coming from their perspective. And it really, we, another goal of ours was to really cover every aspect. So the highs, the lows, the in-betweens, everything that goes into your journey from a minor league, newly drafted prospect up to major leagues and beyond. And y'all really wanted to hone in on the intensity level in your road to the show career and the grind, correct? Yeah, uh, one of my favorite things that we talked about and that we actually implemented into the game was rivalry games and mm-hmm. how important those are. I mean, they're, we know they're important as a fan, but as players, we know that they're important as well. And we're getting input from our guests about what it means to play in these rivalry games and how important that is with your growth as a player. And let's take a look at that. Roll it, Colin. It's his first time experiencing the Cubs-Cardinals rivalry up close. Carlos, you know all about that. What can this player expect? It's just so much fun. It's the way baseball is supposed to be. The intensity from the fans, from the stands, is very palpable. It's real. And you feel it, you know. And the best thing is make sure that you have it in your favor. For example, when we played in Wrigley Field at home, uh, it it was easy, right? It was fun to have all those fans behind us. But when we went over to St. Louis, it was a tough one. I mean, it was a very hostile environment. You know, good fans, but you felt that you were not liked and uh, that everyone was... Uh, pressing so that you would lose. So uh, very difficult to manage. The best advice I have, enjoy it. Enjoy it because this is baseball heaven. This is a very nice addition to the game. What about superstitions? I heard that our good friend King Griffey Jr. uh, (laughs) sold a car at one point. Can you give us a little bit more backstory on that? Yeah, he got rid of that car because he felt it had no hits in it. It Just (laughs) wasn't getting the hits he wanted and sold it. It's unbelievable, but it's true. And you know, we've seen so many players throughout the years with their superstitions. It was a lot of fun to talk to Ken and others about that because there's varying perspectives on is a superstition worth it? Is it real? And so we were able to get a few opinions across the spectrum. Must be nice. (laughs) Must be nice. All right. So I also heard that there are new parameters for how the videos are being shown. Right, fellas? Obviously, like we said, like I said, like we want this to feel as dynamic as possible. We want you to feel like these moments and these narrative videos and these elements like are really responding to what you're doing as a player so on the back end of things behind the scenes we're going in there and really making that these videos happen when they're supposed to happen and trigger when you know if you play really well or you strike out four times in a game and get that golden sombrero you know we'll see a video so tell us a little bit about the new mental performance coach in the game how does all this work yeah we were able to work with kellen lee who's a mental performance coach in the san francisco giants organization he has an existing relationship from college with kirby st john one of our terrific designers on this game and 
he brought Kel on board to talk about the mental difficulties and struggles that go along with being a professional athlete. It is a grind. You know, you think about how long the baseball season is and how many setbacks you're going to face. It's a game of failure. So Kellen was able to walk us through some of the techniques that he uses with real professional athletes to get them to their peak performance levels. I think it's beneficial playing our game. I think it's beneficial playing baseball in real life. I think people will really enjoy what Kellen brings along with Rachel Balkovic talking about how to approach at bats. She's got such insight and such prowess talking about this. I was thinking I could go to the cage and actually make good contact for once in my life. It, it is a rare <laughs> thing, but Rachel had me feeling like I was ready to go. This sounds so exciting. So who is some of the returning talent and just a few of the new talent that's going to be joining the uh, broadcast this year for Road to the Show? We're so lucky to work with the amazing roster of people who participated in this. We've talked a lot about Joe Maurer, Rachel Balkovec, and Kellen Lee on this one. Last year, we got Robert Flores, Lauren Shahadi, Jim Callis, Jonathan Mayo, Mike Lowell, Sean Casey, Carlos Pena, and Cliff Floyd, and... Uh, Al Leiter, too. And this year, we, we've added beyond that. We got Ron Darling, who is such a terrific mind. He thinks the game on such a high level as a pitcher. It was a treat to work with him. We got more with Sean Casey, who is utterly hilarious. And he was right at the top of our list when we knew we wanted to run this back. Yeah, and for me, like personally being on the team this year to work with somebody like Ken Griffey Jr. and Joe Maurer, two players that I've covered in my previous sports life and now to kind of work with them on something like this was just, it was awesome. So is there anything else you would like to cover? From my perspective, having been a broadcaster in the minor leagues, it's really great to be able to be a part of a feature like this that brings intensity and story and depth to this mode that I know so many of our fans love. I came on playing this mode. This was the first thing I did when I bought my first copy of MLB The Show. And so it's a real privilege to work with this team and get to do these incredible things and say, oh yeah, I spent the day shooting with Ken Griffey Jr. or Joe Maurer or Mike Lowell. Just in incredible to me. Yeah, and I'll take this moment too to just sort of give a shout out to our production team. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine Castle, Matt Oka, Steve Scoville, Ron Alano, Charles Eck, and uh, John Livingston was a huge help with this as well. I'm always blown away by the creative team. They make me look much more competent than I actually am. Oh, they make us all look much more competent than we actually are. Shout out to PlayStation <laughs> Creative for all their hard work. Now let's shift gears and sit down with Tony on the improvements to Road to the Show and Ball Player. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks. All right, now I'm joined by Tony. Tony, once again, thanks for joining us. How you doing? I'm doing really well, Ramon. Thank you so much for having me here today. For those of you who <laughs> might not know, Tony, how about you introduce yourself and tell everybody uh, what your role is here on the MLB The Show team? Yeah, right on. So my name is Tony Morton. I am a senior systems designer here at San Diego Studios, uh, and I have been leading the charge on our ball player initiative. All right, so let's get started. So, Tony, let's talk about the introduction to ball player last year. So I think I think a real key takeaway for this one is to just talk about ball player from 21 uh, and talk about a lot of the feedback because a lot of the community feedback is what drove our decisions and our goals for this year. Uh, so you know we saw the thing about uh, from last year uh, only having one ball player, not being able to have multiple um, uh, multiple individual ball players, uh, issues with inconsistent progression. Um, and then a bit too much in terms of your ball player can do it all. And so we made a lot of decisions and we made a lot of choices this year to really respect that feedback and uh, kind of change the direction we were going uh, to make sure that we landed on something we felt the community would be uh, more uh, excited to engage with. Okay. And all of these decisions, you know, for year two for ball player was based off of community feedback, correct? Yeah, a lot of it was driven by community feedback. You know, we had, you know, there were some initial, uh, I guess, designs for ball player that had been set up, you know, even years ago. Uh, and we had a, you know, we wanted to change direction a bit. You know, we got the, the first iteration out, and I think it's something that we have to really take into consideration. You know, being a yearly title, you get, you know, some of the work done, it gets out there, people interact with it, they engage with it, then you make some changes and you adapt and you, you know, you, you, you change your direction a bit. So, um, just a huge thank you to the community for all the feedback we got from last year, a lot of the valuable insight, and, uh, and hopefully, you know, this year it's a, 
a more compelling package and, and we'll be looking for feedback again so we, we know where to take it from here. Awesome to hear. Now let's talk about some of the changes to ball player and road to the show for MLB The Show 22. So I think up first and foremost is uh, the addition of multiple ball players. Um, so one of the things we saw from last year was people, you know, they really wanted the ability to have uh, different ball players. They didn't just want to have the one. Uh, so you can do that now and you can you can manage up to 10 ball players, and uh, you can, you know, different appearances, a different position, strength, those sorts of things. Uh, and all that is reinforced by a new ball player creation flow as well. So this year, uh, when you go ahead and you go to make a ball player, you're going to select, you know, uh, what you want to do. Do you want to be a pure pitcher? Do you want to be a two way player? Uh, do you want to be a pure position player? And then from there, you know, do you want to focus on power? You know, if you're in a position uh, for a position player, do you want to focus on velocity or do you want to focus on uh, break as a, as a pitcher? And then, you know, using those parameters, you know, we kind of set up your ball player and then you'll take that into road to the show. Uh, the intro to road to the show and the narrative road to the show is going to respect those choices. Uh, that was another piece of feedback from last year. You know, everybody was a everybody was a two way player, and then pretty quickly you could opt. You know, you could opt out and, and go one way or the other. This year, with these changes, you're able to start road of the show uh, in the position and doing the thing that you want to do, and then you know you take the narrative from there. So I, I think that's I think that's super important. Good to hear. Um, you also mentioned to me a few days ago that the progression systems have been adjusted. Oh yeah, absolutely they have. So that was actually an, another really big piece of feedback. Um, you know, the initial idea behind the, the, the ball player was, you know, use your ball player in road of the show, use your ball player in uh, diamond dynasty. You can, you know, progress your ball player in, in all of these different areas. Um, and we, we did see, you know, quite a bit of feedback where people felt like road of the show should have been the focus. And so this year, what we've done is the progression has been revamped in a few different ways. Uh, the first one I'll touch on is going to be uh, the fact that um, Road to the Show is how you progress your ball player. Um, all of the uh, missions and things that you'll be doing are all inside Road to the Show. Uh, we've also adjusted the reward rates, so you're going to be progressing uh, faster than you were last year. Uh, so you should be getting more rewards uh, more often. Uh, we have a bigger variety of rewards than we uh, this year over last year, which is super exciting as well. Uh, and then the other side of it too, uh, last year, we had uh, your programs and they were tied to each individual archetype item. This year, what we've done is based on what you make in role create, uh, you have, you know, a uh, in certain scenarios, you'll have a handful of archetype items, right? You'll have like up to three that you can you can use. And it doesn't matter which one that you use, you'll progress the same program. Once you get to the end of that program, you'll get another, you know, bundle of archetype items, you know, bronze to silver to gold to diamond. So you can experiment, right? Last year, if you wanted to try something different, you were kind of starting back at square one. And we wanted to avoid that this year to, you know, promote experimentation and, you know, let players mess around a little bit until they really find what they like. So Tony, what exactly are rewards when we're talking about the realm of ball player in Road to the Show? So the rewards are going to be a lot of the different avenues that you'll upgrade and uh, improve your ball player. And they come in a, a few different uh, a few different types and, 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 and versions. So the first one, and I think the most important one, which will be at the end of each program, is the new archetype for you know the next program. And that's going to be like a really big jump in attributes. Uh, they're focused in on your ball players, you know, the choices you've made and, and your build. The other rewards that you'll get will be things like perks. Perks are going to be the things that you can slide into the archetype item. They're kind of like flavor items, if you will. Uh, new this year will be uh, dynamic perks, which are situational, you know, whether you're maybe ahead in the count or if you are on, say, your seventh pitch or something. They're different, mm -hmm. you know, uh, scenarios that kind of kick in. Uh, and so those are going to be uh, perks. The other thing we give away is uh, equipment for your ball player. So whether it's bats or cleats, you'll be able to get new items that way. Uh, we also give XP. Uh, and the XP is what drives our uh, our featured program, which is a full reward track on its own. And then we also give you stubs, and the stubs you can take over to the community marketplace, maybe pick up equipment or uh, you know pick up some uh, some new cards and whatnot, uh, pick up some perks. Um, and all in all, that that full package is a kind of like a full progression suite to help um, elevate your ball player, increase your OVR, and uh, and uh, increase your abilities and, and your chances to get to get called up in road to the show. Yeah, play the game the way you want. Just by playing the game, you're going to end up doing these programs like you mentioned, and you're going to unlock tons of sweet rewards just by playing the game. Talk a little bit more about player agency and player programs because we have a lot of new fans 
who are just now getting introduced to Road to the Show and Ball Player. How does a program work in Road to the Show? So the programs essentially, you know, they are designed with a, a mission structure, if you will. And so for an example, like let's say you're a pitcher, you would go into the game, you get so many, uh, you know, you strike out so many people, then you'll get some program points. And that moves your program forward. As you acquire more points, you'll hit different tiers, you'll get new rewards, whether it's, you know, uh, perk packs, a new archetype item, stubs, XP, all those kinds of things are, are in there in the program. And so the design philosophy behind the missions is that, it's a set of missions that you're gonna do while you play. It should happen kind of naturally and organically. You shouldn't have to go do anything crazy or you know, you know, something you know, totally out of left field to do it. Just as you're playing your road to the show career, you should naturally progress these programs, and then you'll be getting you know rewards and items from there. Now, you mentioned player agency, and I think this is actually really, really big because one of the other big things we did this year is uh, is pitch select. And so when it comes down to your pitch repertoire this year, you'll actually have a series of pitches at your disposal. If you're you know, a pitcher, you can slide those things into your repertoire. You can use those. Uh, they will track progression um, uh, individually. So you know, if you want to use a four seam for a while, increase the, the attributes on it, and then you want to swap out for you know a two seam or, or whatever it may be you can do that you go back to the four seam and you pick up right where you left off and again we really want people to kind of experiment with you know with their ball player with how they're playing their game so they can feel free to you know just find out how they want to play but you mentioned about swapping pitches but you can also swap appearances too right yeah, you totally can. So you have full control over your, your ball player's appearance. And with multiple ball players, you can make, you know, a plethora uh, of different ball players with all different looks. Uh, and then, you know, when you when you create that ball player with the appearance, you'll have the choices that you made in terms of how you want that ball player to play. So if you want like, you know, a super tall, lanky second baseman, make that guy. If you want to go ahead and make a really short right fielder, you can make that guy. And then, you know, you can you can use those in in road to the show for their corresponding careers and, and then you know play the game how you want to play so tony one of the uh you know show hail tony's obviously the cover athlete for mlb the show 22 and two-way player was a thing last year but what you know the feedback we heard was some people didn't want to do that so options and being able like you said about user and player agency was real big this year and as you can see on the screen here we don't force you anymore. If you want to be a two-way player, if you want to try to make it to the Hall of Fame and be the next Shohei Otani, you can, but you can also just be a pitcher or a position player, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you, you definitely nailed it with player agency. We just wanted to give the users more choice. We wanted to allow them to play the game how they wanted to play. So whether it's you want to be a pitcher, you want to be a two-way player, you want to be a position player, it's up to you to play that game. All right, Tony, now that we know about ball play and road to the show, let's go and create one. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So let's take a look at the role create system that we've got in this year that really kind of gives the player, you know, a bit more control over their over their ball player. So, you know, we're going to go in, we'll, you know, we'll make a two way player at first. And again, this is all about player choice. So whether or not you want to focus your pitcher on, say, you know, velocity, break, control, you can do that because, you know, you, you make those choices up front. Now, in this example, what we're looking at today, this is going to be role create for a two way player. Uh, so it has all the options. Uh, whereas, you know, if you're doing just pure pitcher, you would kind of select this and go on. But, you know, so we're going to go ahead and uh, for this selection, I'm going to create a, uh, a break based pitcher uh, with uh, a secondary for my two way player. The secondary, again, power, contact, fielding. This is all about just kind of getting those choices in there and really allowing me to to create the player that I want to that I want to make. Mm -hmm. All about player agency and choices, right? Yeah, it really, really is. Uh, you know, and the, and the second part of that is how do I want to play once I'm on the field? Do I want to be a starting pitcher? Do I want to be a closing pitcher? You know, once I get to uh, my position, where do I want to play? Um, and again, you know, this system sets it up. So once I get into road to the show, I can kind of begin my career, how I want to play the game. And it just gives me complete control. Um, you know, once you're done with all your choices, we're going to give you, you know, a, a quick high level uh, summary this way you know so you know what's going on and, and what you did and then from there you'll go in you'll start your career and and that's how you'll play the game fantastic not only can you swap pitches but you can swap appearances too as you might notice some of these facial hair options will look eerily similar to a legend pitcher who was just announced on socials earlier this week let's welcome brian wilson to mlb the show 22 with his gameplay debut roll the footage colin what you tell yourself is I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Back here in extras, and a new pitcher on the mound in the bottom half of the inning. 
and a pitch. And you played behind guys, and they love having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. He's got it. Ball game. And the Giants hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one-run ball game. Close one here today, and your final 5-4. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon. Welcome, Brian. Of course, his beard looks phenomenal. Now, let's talk more about the Underlining Systems Foundation in Road to the Show and Ball Player, Tony. So we made a lot of, you know, I guess, foundational changes to our uh, our systems in order to support uh, a bit more control on our side. Um, we have the ability now to lock things like pitches, for example, uh, to an archetype item. Uh, so now, why is that important, and what does that do? So last year, again, on the, uh, you know, on the uh, on the on the side of feedback. We saw that a lot of people were missing the knuckleball. And so the ability to do this allows us to bring the knuckleball back. We can tie the knuckleball to a very specific uh, archetype item. And then we're able to keep that archetype item uh, for road to the show use only. Um, you know, one of the big things with being able to use your ball player in road to the show or use your ball player in diamond dynasty. There are some things that we just, we couldn't allow online, but this allows us to, you know, bring some of those things back into the game, let players who are in road to the show, have fun and play the game how they want to, without having to worry about, uh, you know, upsetting the balance that is, that is online play. So we'll just come out and say it, no knuckleball use in online play, but for your offline road to the show ball player, you can use the knuckleball. Let's keep going. Uh, the perk system was is every one of everybody's favorite parts of Road to the Show. Can you talk about some of the changes this year? Yeah, absolutely, totally can. So we've expanded our library of perks quite a bit. Uh, we still have uh, you know some of the ones that we had last year in terms of just flat uh, attribute or statistical perks that are just you know just kind of a, a bonus, if you will, all the time. And then what we've also done is uh, we've added in dynamic perks and dynamic perks are something that are kind of situational based, uh, you know, and, and they give you a much bigger bonus, but only some of the time. So for example, you know, let's say you're at bat, you're behind in the count. Well, we're going to give you, you know, a boost to uh, your, your contact. If you're trying to get, you know, uh, maybe additional exit velocity on a certain type of swing, we've got you covered there as well. And there's just a plethora of these things that really allow you to kind of assess how you want to play. You know, maybe you've got a game coming up and you, you know, you're a little worried about certain scenarios. You can kind of you know, set your ball player up so you can, you can be, uh, be ready for that and you can handle anything. So I think it's a pretty cool approach and I'm excited to see, you know, how the players get in there. How do they build their loadouts? How do they set up their ball player? And you know, how do they set themselves up for success? And again, this is all going back to ball player being reworked and rebalanced from the ground up. Uh, and you mentioned earlier that the same goes for the archetype items, which you just expressed a completely fresh pass to make sure, you know, we considered all the changes that was made this year based off community feedback. Right, Tony? Yeah, 100%. So archetype items, much like perks, they all got a huge pass on them as well. Not only just from a, you know, an attribute level or from, uh, from you know, there's uh, statistics, but, you know, the progression was another part of it. Uh, overall, I mean, even something as small as naming convention, we tried to take a look at everything and, you know, consider the dynamic perks that you have available, uh, the updated uh, flat-based attribute perks available, um, you know, pitch repertoire, uh, the ability to have the new archetype items with progression and missions like there's so many moving pieces and we're really hoping that this new package uh, just feels good and uh, it is a lot of fun to engage with. Stupendous. Now let's talk about dynamic challenges in Road to the Show. First, what are dynamic challenges in Road to the Show and how have they changed for this year's game? So a dynamic challenge in Road to the Show is something where we kind of we, we give you a mission on the fly, if you will. You know, so say you're at bat. And you've got, you know, there's some people maybe within scoring position. We say, hey, if you can get a hit, maybe a contact hit or a power based hit uh, that will drive in a run, then we're going to give you an additional boost to some of your attributes. Uh, and so that's kind of what a dynamic challenge is. And they, these things are, are all over the game and all over the mode. Um, they needed some love. They needed some updating. Uh, so we took some time this year to get some new ones in there. We took a time to, you know, double check some of the old ones that people weren't maybe engaging with to, to get those out and just gave the, 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 system itself like an overall pass and uh and some much needed love and attention these new additions and changes all look great thanks again for joining tony absolutely ramon thanks for having me and uh, it's always exciting to be on 
Thanks to Ben and Jared for giving us updates on everything new coming to the narrative feature and Road to the Show. And thanks to Tony for all the updates coming to Ball Player and Road to the Show in MLB The Show 22. It's the week before early access on April 1st, but we have one feature premiere left, and it's a big one, Diamond Dynasty. We are going to talk about many seasons, Diamond Dynasty Co-op, but we also are going to talk about everything that's been added or changed for live content in MLB The Show 22. We're going to talk about everything planned for esports for all those competitive players out there. For our viewers on Twitch, guess what? Twitch drops are back, so link your account, watch, and earn some packs even before the game comes out. So be ready next Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and YouTube. If you missed any feature premieres, head over to the San Diego Studio YouTube page to get caught up on online co-op, the new commentary team, and learn about all the updates to franchise mode, March to October, gameplay, and so much more. Thanks to Ben, Jared, and Tony for joining this week. Carson, Colin, and Steven for helping out behind the scenes as always. See you next week. Diamond Dynasty and more. Peace.